Breastfeeding is not all snuggles and cuddles. Some may actually experience an aversion to the act of breastfeeding, and there are three main types of aversions that we will be discussing today. The first aversion is a sensory aversion. Breastfeeding is a complex sensory experience full of touch, sound, smell, and movement. In this type of aversion, it's to the actual sensations that occur in the body while breastfeeding. While the baby is latched, the mother may experience creepy crawling or tingling sensations in various parts of her body, especially in the legs. There may be a feeling of being overwhelmed or having the intense desire to unlatch. Itching and other sensations in the body has, have also been described. As the baby unlatches, the sensations go away, but often leave a feeling of guilt or sadness for having felt that way. Many parents who identify as neurodiverse or who have ADHD have a higher uh, sensitivity and may become more easily overwhelmed or overstimulated by the process of breastfeeding. Sometimes there may be no aversion for months and it can happen during pregnancy as hormones shift the body or also in older infants, toddlers, or preschoolers, especially overnight where the aversion is, I don't want to latch you anymore. There may be a sense of guilt over this as the parent has enjoyed bed sharing or latching in the past. They may be fine with breastfeeding during the day or with certain boundaries, but it's at other times when they themselves are overwhelmed and overstimulated that they become averse to the actual act of breastfeeding. The next type of aversion is called dysuphoric milk ejection reflex or DMER. This only occurs during the actual letdown of milk or the release of milk, which can happen several times during a feeding. It's a physiological response to the release of the hormone oxytocin. An intense transient dysphoria results in feelings of dread, anxiety, sadness, or irritability felt for 30 seconds to two minutes while the hormone is released. The rest of the breastfeeding or pump session is fine. I have seen parents that experience DMER only to a pump and not to the baby or to a baby and not the pump. So I have seen this personally go both, go both ways. With DMER, it is transient or short-lived. It only is experienced during the letdown. This is what sets it apart from the other types of sensory sensitivities or breastfeeding aversions. The final breastfeeding aversion is called breastfeeding aversion and agitation, known as BAA. In further contrast to DMER, this aversion occurs unexpectedly, usually for those who have breastfed for quite some time without issues. It varies in onset, severity, and duration. People who experience this describe it as involuntary, overwhelming sensations of aversion in response to the act of breastfeeding or pumping that lasts the majority of the feeding, not just during the letdown. These people experience negative emotions, including anger, rage, agitation, irritability, disgust or self-disgust, as well as guilt or shame. There is often a specific intrusive thought that coincides with BAA, which are specific to breastfeeding and can include wanting to run away and not breastfeed, a strong urge to stop breastfeeding during breastfeeding and then feeling guilty for that thought afterwards, feeling trapped or imprisoned during breastfeeding, wanting to hurt the baby so they stop sucking, and again, that feeling goes away as soon as the feeding is done or the baby unlatches, and feelings of being touched out or overwhelmed. While most people who have BAA describe the feelings and thoughts in a similar way, it happens in varying degrees and durations and onset and severity. This is different than DMER where the feelings are only during letdown and the rest of the feeding is fine. Um, there is also with BAA, the distinction is that the feelings are anger, agitation, which is different than DMER, which is more dread, despair, and sadness. We don't really know what causes it, but the research of Zenab Yate has been phenomenal in reaching this population that before has felt very isolated and alone in their experience. We suspect hormones, lack of sleep, unrealistic expectations, and not enough self-care may play a role, but there's still really not enough research to know why some people experience and some don't. New research is still needed, but know that you're not alone. 
up to 85% of us will experience some form of baby blues. It's normal to not be happy all the time and to be quite overwhelmed, especially when you're responsible for the cares of a tiny human for all of their needs and um, cares. It is normal to feel overwhelmed while you're going through this process, especially if you have a lack of sleep and nutrition while caring for that new baby. If the symptoms last for more than two weeks or are severe, or if you feel like they're impacting your ability to care for your baby, the other issue that some can run into is postpartum depression, anxiety, and rage, which can be paired with any of the other breastfeeding aversions that we talked about earlier. So what do you do with all of these information? What can help? Many people find that just knowing that their experience is not unique to them is phenomenal. What you're experiencing is real and not just made up. You are not alone in your aversion and there are many other people out there who are experiencing symptoms similar to yours. Nutrition and hydration are critical. Breast milk is made from water and is also made from your blood. So what do you do with all of this information? What's the next step and how do you treat it? Sometimes just knowing that what you're experiencing is real and not just made up is the first step. You are not alone and there are many other people who may be experiencing a similar aversion. There are support groups for this on Facebook and social media where you can find other people's experiences and hear the strategies and tips that worked for them. We do also know that nutrition and hydration are critical when trying to manage any of these aversions. Breast milk is high in water, which is taken from your blood. It takes calories to make calories and any nutritional deficits for yourself can transition into lowering your body's ability to be able to make milk for your baby as well as maintain its own mood and emotional balance. Staying well hydrated is essential not only for making milk but also reducing the feelings of depletion and aversion while feeding. Drinking water 10 to 15 minutes before you breastfeed or pump can be really helpful. Also be mindful of any nutritional deficits you may have, as this can make symptoms even worse. Working with a naturopathic practitioner, functional medicine physician, or primary health provider can help you figure out if maybe there's a deficiency in your iron, vitamin D or B, or other micronutrients, which would be essential to your health. Many find that taking a magnesium supplement may also help reduce the symptoms of both TMER, sensory aversion, and BAA. Magnesium glycinate is the preferred type of magnesium, as magnesium citrate is most often used for constipation. Sleep is also the hardest to get, but many find that their aversion is worse if they don't get a good night's sleep. Take it slow, ask for help if you can, and sleep when the baby sleeps if you can. We all know that that advice is really hard to follow when you're trying to catch up on all those chores around the house, but trying to preserve sleep is really optimal. Some people find that distracting themselves during breastfeeding or pumping can also be really helpful. Watching TV, using noise reducing or loop headphones, Listening to music or talking on the phone can work because the brain can't process too many activities at the same time. Hormonal shifts caused by pregnancy, diet, and periods can throw even the most mindful person off. A blood test can check for abnormal hormone levels of LH, FSH, prolactin, estrogen, and progesterone. Diet changes, specific supplements, or medications can help under the guidance of a trained healthcare professional. And for some, there may be the correct time to wean. If the aversion is getting in the way of caring for the baby or caring for yourself, you may want to consider working with a skilled lactation consultant to either figure out, are there other strategies and techniques that we can do to help with the aversion or is it potentially time to wean? Now you know.